Kia ora, I'm Miria Makamo. Ia Fita Matalasi stunned the nation when he publicly forgave his son's killer, Shane Harrison. Tonight, he takes another extraordinary step in that journey, one which brings two fathers together, a Christian and a convicted murderer. Tania Page goes inside prison for this powerful meeting that will change the lives of both men. How can time heal? It's not right to bury your child. These two men from different worlds. I wanted to look like them. Rough, ragged, bad. We're in a whole different world other than these walls. This is their story of murder, revenge. All I wanted was get this man that hurt my baby and a meeting years in the making. Yafeta Matalasi is a doting grandfather. Good boys. All my life is wrapped around them. See if you can get up to where your brother is. The younger one, he's got his dad's determination. Nice, very nice. The older one has got his dad's brains in meds. Good boys, well done. The missing link their dad, Seal. And he knew that he can play me. He knew that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he liked playing rugby. His love was NFL. Sporty, cheeky, independent. He contacted me on uh, my grandson's birthday. And he uh, said to me, um, Dad, come over. August 22nd, 2013. Next thing I know, the cops were at my door. Two mongrel mob members, Shane Harrison and Dylan Parkai, pulled up at these Wellington flats, armed with a sawn-off rifle. And they were coming for a fight. How did Seal get involved? When he saw one of his friends being dealt to, he, he jumped in. Joining a big brawl. It was Shane who, who ordered Parkai to shoot. That was spraying bullets all over the place. Then shooting Seal at close range. Seal didn't make it to the hospital. He was actually the one that called the ambulance. And uh, yeah, he was, um, he knew he was going to die. He knew. Seven years later, this is the first time Yafeta has gotten this close to the spot Seal was killed. I didn't go there when he needed me. I wouldn't want to go there. Yafeta came face to face with Seal's killers in court. I have pleasure on Mr. Counsel Smith and Mr. Tennant for Mr. Parkai. What were you thinking? Do to him what he did to my son. And I'll do it with bare hands. Through the trial, his anger burned. I just see Reed. I just saw Reed. How intense were those feelings? Very, very intense. I saw Shane's son at the court. I thought, why do you have the right to have a father? And why does that guy have a right to have a son? We have been given extraordinary access to go inside. Thank you. Thank you. To talk to Shane Harrison. There's so much I can say, want to say. Why did you want to join the Mongol mob? I wanted to be a Mongol mob because I wanted to look like them. Rough, rugged, bad. Aged 50 now, but at 16, he was looking to fill a gap in his life. It was like a brotherhood, a friendship deeper than mum and dad's love, you say to see. Yeah. But there's an old saying, hey, you do the crime, you do the time. Hey. After a three-week trial, Shane and Dylan were convicted of Seal's murder. 
And this enraged father was offered the chance to have his say. Writing his victim impact statement. The more I cry, the angrier I got. And there was this voice. I knew it was Seal. He was telling me, Dad, nothing you can do can bring me back. Nothing. On the day of sentencing, he stunned everyone. Without any reservations, Shane and Dylan, I forgive you. I plead with you to let Shane Pierre Harrison and Dylan Parkay go free. He's now a deeply devout man. He gives me compassion. He gives me the courage. Life can throw us any challenge, and the heart of a challenge the stronger we get. He's composed a song for Seal. We are this means a lot to you, doesn't it? It does. It does. This is, this is my life now, and uh, this is what has saved me. They received Yafeta's forgiveness, but freedom was never an option. At sentencing, Dylan got 12 years, and Shane, who'd already done time for a violent manslaughter, got 13. Since the trial, Yafeta's wanted to meet them. I just want to know what makes them tick as men. Why they have to be in a gang to be able to be a man. Yeah, he want to go and to meet Mr. Harrison. I want to, I want to face him and tell him what I think. That Mike Hinton is an experienced restorative justice facilitator. Why not provide opportunity for people to heal? Why not provide opportunity for people to listen? How do you manage any risks involved? Well, it's simply you need to engage with everybody beforehand. And that can take years of persistence. Today, Mike's flown from Wellington to Hamilton to meet Shane's mum, Kahutoi. We need to meet uh, all people in the conference, and particularly uh, support people such as uh, Kahutoi. What are you worried about? It's important that the support people understand how the conference is conducted. Kia Nice to meet you and in you. person. Come, let's have a seat, eh? <laughs> all right. That's all right. My role as the facilitator is to ensure that we speak in a respectful manner. Yes. What happened to him? When did he go down a different path? I believe in 85, um, when our baby died, Yeah. things changed drastically. So Shane you know, would have been... Fifteen going, he was yeah. fourteen. Yeah, I, I struggled with taking care of my children okay. at that time. Yes, that was that was way back. Mm. I didn't even see it coming. One day he was home, and the next thing he was telling me he's and 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 the gangs that that was really hard, really really hard coping with that. That family history will help Mike, who heads to Hawke's Bay Prison. Is Shane ready to face your feta? I have a deep nervousness. And yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and I'm not one to scare easy, but you know, this, this is quite scary for me too. And I think it could be challenging. Because what we're not going to do, there's no need to relitigate everything. It's finished. Yeah. All I can do is just be honest from my heart what and, we're and, and respectful, keep the respect. Yeah. Shane is in the high security unit at this time. We're allowed in all the way to his cell. This is an impressive wall though. There's lots of important kamata up there, aren't there? People were concerning my, uh, my front lines mm. and Tom Moldy. Mm. And just it's become really important to you. Oh, it's always been, it's always been. Mm. 
it's always been it just when I chose the Mongol mob, I lost in touch with my my pikang, mm. my terrible mob. Mm. He's been reconnecting, reflecting on his crimes. When Mr. Matalasi forgave you, what did you think of that? Honestly, um, I couldn't believe it. Actually, I didn't know how to think or how to feel. Wanting to meet Mr. Matarasi. And all I knew was that myself that I hate him. Man to man, it doesn't matter how he puts up this face and all his tattoos, he's hiding. The real Shane Harrison is hiding behind the bravado. Go! Come in! Come in! Ah. Yeah, 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 dude. Oh. Yafeta Matalasi's escape Ben, did you feel that oomph? Is sport When Sio died, I felt really sad But then I thought, no, no, no Get up So I went and coached rugby Nice Good work, boys Helping them out It makes me feel good Same thing backwards We go He was a Wellington oh, High School teacher But after Sio was shot dead He just couldn't work anymore I'm still taking antidepressants. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it will, time will heal. How? How can time heal? Time may not heal all wounds. I think I'll use a uh, nine. But on the eve of his oh, yes. long-awaited meeting with one of the men convicted of his son's yeah. killing, Shane Harrison, it has brought perspective. See, it still hurts. Yeah. But for me, I now see a pathway through my grandsons. And an unexpected closeness with the man organising the hui, restorative justice facilitator, Mike Hinton. I'd never hit a nine up here. <laughs> it's not just what we do for a paycheck. It's much more than that. Had a chat with Shane. All right. I'm quite happy that he's, uh, he's in a good space to do the conference. Yeah. Speak slowly, calmly, because everything you say yeah. Shane, his mum, yeah. you know, they yeah. need time to process it. Process it, yeah. Now both men are ready for a meeting years in the making. Finally, this is the day. Haere mai ra, haere mai ra. No matter to my relang. everybody. Um, what we're going to do today is have a conversation. Okay. Efita, it's been a, a long time. Please. Shane, you're a son. I'm a son. You're a father. I'm a father. And nobody who is here can understand what I'm going through. Nobody. I was an angry man, Shane. My relatives, they were crying for blood. And I was just sitting there and looking at your family and looking at your son. This is honesty, Shane. All I, I wanted to do was revenge, avenge my, my son's death. But then I hold back and I came through. I came through. I'm prepared to listen to you. Kia ora Kia Ah. If it, um, there's so much things I would like to say, express, but there's something, there's things like apologies, sorries, can never bring back your son, I know. bring back the peace that you're missing in your family's life now, and your grandchildren, but from the bottom of my heart, I'm so thankful 
Thank you. I'm so thankful. Thank you. From the whole of my heart, I'm so thankful for this blessing. I believe you. I've been one to uh, not apologise, say sorry, because it wasn't. It was weak. But I'm saying sorry for what has happened to you and your family, Afeta. That's the most important thing. The atmosphere is highly charged. Just explain how you got to write that victim impact statement. In which he forgave his son's killers. Seal being seal. I heard him. I, I actually heard him. I'm gone. I've got sons. You've got to look after my son. What I said on that day stays. I was shocked and I didn't. I just, I, yeah. I couldn't believe um, my father would do that. Because <laughs> uh, at the time then, I, I wouldn't have been able to. It's happened, brother. It's happened. Yeah. I would want you to. Good. I would want revenge too. Yeah, that's good. That's good. For Shane's mum, Kahutoi, it's overwhelming. I was just really, really heartbroken when I heard what had happened. I was angry with my son. Yeah. Angry with the Mangumo. The forgiveness that you've given yeah. fills my heart too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sanetti is Yafeta's pastor. I take my head off uh, for what uh, he was doing. It was blown me away. In the same time, Shane, your journey's been really full of different challenges that you've accepted. Because I was the oldest sibling, I was given a role, an adult role to be mum and dad. Yeah. And I started rebelling against them, which led me into a life of mischievousness, yeah. um, antisocial, anti-authority, yeah. because I liked the violence yeah. that the Mongol mob was all about. I'm not only apologising to you, to your family and sorry, saying sorry, but to a lot of many other people that I've done wrong to. Kapai, Kapai Mozo. Kapai, thank you. They talk for over an hour and a half about the past and the future. If you ask me now, I would like to see him out now. As much as you would like me out, um, I'm not ready to get out. I need to do all this, what oh, I'm doing. Okay. Yep. I, yep. I need to go through this, um, yep. this journey, what this I'm doing journey, now, and this change, yep. change is, a, is a must. That's cool. Once you're out, you're going to come to church <laughs> with me. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that could be a big challenge for me. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be mana enhancing. We're people, we're humans. We're not just a name on a page on a summary of facts. If we're going to heal ourselves as a society, it's more than just the offender must be locked up and thrown away the key. Restorative justice provides that opportunity to change. Before returning to his cell, a few precious moments. I've got some gifts for you, uh, your feta for you oh. and your family. What? I made this all myself. Well, well it's all Thank family you. from my heart. And once okay. again, I'm so sorry, yeah, you your feta. So how did that go for you? That was real. That was absolutely, for me, mind-blowing. For me, it was quite um, overwhelming. What kind of life do you want? A better and more respectful and honest living with my children, my family, and hopefully I can persuade them and not go down the path that I've set. Yeah. Shane's still got work to do. For your feta, it's all been worth it. How will you walk out of here? I'm a happy man now. Very happy. <laughs>Well, very courageous for both men. Eofeta hopes to meet Shane Harrison again. Meanwhile, Shane's been moved from high to medium security and his first parole hearing is in 2026. Now, a big mihi to Sunday producer Chris Cook. He's been working on this story for six years alongside the Department of Corrections to facilitate that powerful hui.